What's good, people? Mind Reese back with another half and half review. Uh, I, I'm this is a half and half review. Y'all know I be late sometimes, but I saw this movie Candyman on Monday. I was gonna do the review earlier in the week, but I'm actually really glad I decided to wait to do this review now. I'm actually recording it on Thursday, and I say that because coming out of the movie, coming straight out of the movie, I wasn't sure about how I felt about the movie. Some things about the movie still confused me. And uh, doing a review like that, I feel like I couldn't give my true best opinion on the film as a whole. Now, with that being said, that's partly due to the fact that I have not seen the original Candyman movie in two decades. So at one time when I was a kid, that's all I felt like I needed to see. I did not watch it again. And yes, that might be because I'm a chump, but still... I did not watch it again. Didn't feel the need to watch it again. Cult classic. Cool. I'm good. I don't even say the shit in the mirror five times. I don't play like that. So that's partly, uh, that's part of the reason why I came out of the movie a bit confused. Um, the reason I say I'm glad I waited is not just because I got to refresh my memory on things, but also because just last night I recorded a, um, a movie review for Candyman on my boy Bibbs's podcast called Have You Seen? That's Have You S C E N E. I will be leaving the link to uh, his podcast in the description. I'm not sure when I put this video out if the podcast will be out yet, but make sure y'all definitely go listen to that. I did it with uh, Bibbs and my boy Shard. But on that podcast, I got to come out and actually get my thoughts out because sometimes when I do these, I get my thoughts out, but sometimes after I'm done, I'm like, oh, man, I forgot to say this. Or, oh, man, I wanted to do this. I'm glad I got to do that first because I got everything out. Now I know everything I want to talk about. And I have a completely different perspective on the movie than I did when I first came out of it. So without further ado, let's get into the review. 2021 Candyman, which is not directed by Jordan Peele. A lot of people think he directed it. He produced it. It's directed by Nia DaCosta. Shout out to her, first black female director to have a number one movie in the domestic box office. Congratulations to her. She will be directing the Captain Marvel sequel next year. But I'm getting off track. I'm getting off track. Let's get into the Candyman review. So going into this film, I wasn't sure what we were going to get. Um, aside from the trailers, I didn't know much about it. All I knew was uh, this was going to be a Candyman movie. Um, produced by Jordan Peele. I didn't know if we were getting a sequel. I didn't know if we were getting a remake. And to my surprise, after seeing the movie, we actually got a bit of both. Um, the best of both worlds with this film, it served as a reimagining, not necessarily a remake, but a reimagining, which also doubled as a spiritual successor slash sequel to the original Candyman in 1992, and it did it very well. It paid respect and homage to the original film. Um, I suggest that, like me, if you have not seen Candyman in a very, very long time, watch the original Candyman, if you can, before go seeing this. Uh, it won't ruin anything for you. It'll just, you'll be able to understand things more clear. Or maybe I'm just slow. Who knows? But still, uh, I suggest that people do that. You don't have to watch the Candyman sequels. I've never even seen them in my life. I don't think they're addressed here at all, but I do suggest that uh, you watch the Candyman, the original film before going to see in this one. But this film follows uh, Anthony, who's a painter, uh, having a hard time really finding motivation for uh, new art projects. And um, after having a conversation, uh, hearing a scary story, from his girlfriend's brother, uh, his girlfriend played by Tiana Paris, who I, who I love. Uh, her brother and her brother's boyfriend came over one night. He told a scary story. And the scary story he told was basically the events of the first Candyman film. And after that, he kind of finds his, uh, his motivation, uh, basically going down to Cabrini Green and, uh, making his next art project more about, uh, I guess, kind of the gentrification of the area. So that's where it starts. And once he gets involved into that, spirals out of control. 
very similar to how Helen Lau did when she visited Cabrini Green in the original Candyman film. So I'm not going to go through the plot. I'm just going to mention things I liked about this. Like I said, it paid great homage to the original film. It ties into the original film. And not only does it do a great job as playing as a sequel, it expands on the story. Um, I'm not, this review is going to come out before my Don't Breathe 2 review. But when you see my Don't Breathe 2 review, you will see that one of the main issues I had about that film was that it did not need to be made. We did not need a Don't Breathe 2 sequel because it really didn't expand or do anything for the story of the original. It didn't. It, it wasn't necessary. After the first story, it was a complete story. That was cool. We could have moved on from that. This does a great job at not only continuing the story, but expanding the legacy and the lore of Candyman. We found out a lot because based on the trailers, you don't see Tony Todd in the trailers and you're thinking, well, is this a sequel? Or is this a brand new thing? And it's both. It's both and it's done very well. And that's a rare thing for me to see. I don't know if it's a rare thing for other people to see. It's a rare thing for me to see. Uh, the acting in this is really good. Tiana Paris does great playing Brianna. Uh, how am I forgetting dude's name? I could never. The guy that played Black Manta and Aquaman, the guy who plays the main character, does a great job in this. Coleman Domingo is my favorite character in this movie. When you watch the trailers, you think that he doesn't really have a huge part. He does, and it's very interesting. Um, there's something I noticed about this film that I'm going to get into in the spoiler section. It has something to do with the kills. And I'm not sure if anyone else who's seen it noticed it. But after going back and thinking, it changed my perspective on the film in a good way. But speaking of the kills, the kills were very, okay, I'm not a horror fan at all. I'm not a fan of horror. I don't even know if I consider this a horror film. It's more like a thriller. Like, it's more of a thriller. I don't think, if you're a fan of horror and you love the gore and the jump scares and stuff like that, I don't think this movie would be for you. This movie is more indie, indie, uh, indie based. It feels like an indie film. You see what I'm saying? An independent film. Uh, and I like that. It did it very well. It kind of did a nice hybrid of indie slash uh, high budget um, studio film. So I did like that. Um, but the kills in the film were very creative. For me, when it comes to slashers and, you know, just gore for the sake of gore, it does nothing for me. It doesn't add to anything. I'm just like, OK. Guts, whatever. But with this. The way they do the kills in this with Candyman, it's only one scene where they really show like gore and body uh, bodies being harmed. It's the first kill, and then after that, they kind of go away from it. They leave it to the imagination, and I love that the best because if I know someone's being killed, but I don't see exactly what's happening to them, but you hear things and you see certain things, that's more terrifying for me than actually saying, "Oh, he just." cut his stomach open and let his guts fall out thinking about what could be happening to this person is more horrifying for me and i think they did that very well uh the kills in this film were executed nice there was one that i didn't really care for um and it wasn't even the one where um the body uh you could see the body being harmed um we do get a cameo from one character from the original film i won't say who i won't say when i won't say you know, are they reprising their role? Uh, is it just the same actor? I'll get into that in the spoiler section. But continuing with the non-spoilers, this is a very good movie, bro. Oh, my goodness. The ending, the ending of the film originally really confused me. It confused me, but after thinking about it and being on my boy Bibbs' podcast last night, I got the idea and I really understood what they were going for. And it changed my entire perspective on the film. Uh, originally going into this review, I would have said, you know, this movie's all right, you know, this movie's all right. I would have said it's all right. But now, after knowing what I know and, you know, basically uh, solidifying my opinion on the film, I'm borderlining between this movie's good and God tier. But I can't give it God tier. I can't. So the rating I'm giving... It's good. It's good. 
I think people will enjoy it. Uh, like I said, if you're a horror fan and you just go for like, you know, uh, the guts, the gore and stuff like that, it's not for you. But I think you should still see this film because it's really good. Um, they push a lot of the social injustice stuff and, you know, black and white and racial profiling and all of that stuff in this film. And originally I felt like, man, they pushed that kind of hard to where I get what you're doing, but you're going to you're doing a little bit too much. We don't need it that much. But after realizing what the ending of the film meant, I feel it was a bit necessary. So now I let it pass. So uh, that's it for the review section. Now I'm about to get into the spoiler section. Please, if you have not seen Candyman, do not continue to watch the spoiler section. I'm begging you. I think you should go see this with a clear mind. I don't even think you should be watching this review if you have not seen it. But I know some people like to get opinions before going to see movies. Um, but please, if you have not seen it, do not watch the spoiler section. I'm warning you. Okay. Fuck out of here. So it's Tony Todd in this film, the original Candyman. Yes, kind of. Um, they digitally alter his face, make him look younger. Uh, he's in the final scene of the movie. That's it. But. The way they pay homage to the original Candyman in this film. I mentioned that the um, the brother of, of Anthony's girlfriend tells a story. And it's basically the story of the original Candyman. I love how the story has changed over time. Like folklore, basically going ear to ear, you know, word of mouth. Now the story has changed. And I wonder, you know, how many people are going to go into this like, oh, yeah, that's how I remember the movie. You see what I'm saying? But um, that changes once that story is told. Candyman has not been mentioned for years. It's almost like, have you ever, if you've seen Freddy versus Jason, Freddy used Jason to get his name back out there because the people of Elm Street vowed to never speak of Freddy again. So the kids that grew up that are teenagers now have no history or knowledge of him. So when killing started happening with Jason, people automatically started to assume it was Freddy which then got his name back out there, got him his power back. Now he can appear again. And that's basically the same concept with Candyman. Um, he's basically using Anthony as a, a conduit, maybe. I don't know if that's the right word. It's probably not. Screw you. Um, using him basically to get his name back out there through Anthony's art. Uh, and Anthony is basically... Anthony's doing a good job at it because now everyone knows about Candyman, the Say My Name art project. And it turns out that Anthony is the baby from the original Candyman, which halfway through the film, I figured out. I figured that out. It was kind of obvious halfway through the film. And that's OK. It didn't make anything worse. It's just like, OK, he's the baby. He, he's the baby from the first film. Let's get to it. He goes to visit his mom, who was played by Vanessa Williams. The cameo I mentioned from the first film. She lets him know the true story about what happened. Um, lets him know that he is that baby that was taken. Uh, Candyman has wanted this baby for a long time. And we also learned that there were different iterations of Candyman. There wasn't just the Tony Todd Candyman. There were instances, you know, and each of these Candymen were born from social injustice and racial injustice. Murdered by the cops, murdered by racists, KKK members, white supremacists, stuff like that. And when they're murdered, they come back in the spirit of Candyman and murdered those who wronged him. And when those who, by those who wronged him, I mean white people. Every single person that dies in this film is a white person. Black people in this film are never in danger. Not one time. Not by Candyman. Not one time. Not one time. And... There's, uh, I notice right before each person dies, there's like, as far as the white people go, there's about three death scenes in this, I think. Might be forgetting one. There's three death scenes. Right before they die, that the film does its best to portray that person as an asshole. So when they die, we don't feel bad. Um, there's a scene with teenage girls in a bathroom. And we see this girl in this in the beginning of the film. Then we come back to her later in the film. She's in the uh, bathroom with her friends. And they like, hey, let's say Candyman in the mirror. It's five girls. Um, 
They say Candyman twice and the window opens. The Asian girl runs out of the bathroom. She says, not today, Satan. I'm not doing this. So the four white girls stay. They say Candyman five times. And before this, we know nothing about these girls. They're just innocent high school girls, right? Wrong. After they say that, they're about to leave out of the bathroom. A black girl comes into the bathroom with her headphones and they start picking with her. You can tell they picked with her before. They bullied her before. She goes into the stall, puts her headphones on. They're kicking the door and shit. Then Candyman shows up and, us, and massacres these girls. And you don't see it. You don't see it. You just hear the screams and you see them crawling. And one of the girls drops her compact like that women use for makeup. And in the mirror, you can see like, you can see the girl crawling and you can see Candyman with the hook. And the girl, the black girl is just in the stall this entire time, just listening to this. They do their best to make sure that before these white people die, we know they are assholes, so we feel no sympathy. I'm not saying this as a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a racist thing. I'm just saying this is what happens. And it all makes sense at the end because at the end of the film, Coleman Domingo's character is basically revealed, you know, he knows who Anthony is. He knows Anthony is that child. Coleman Domingo's character wants to bring Candyman back and he knows that Anthony is the rightful heir to Candyman because that's who Candyman chose to carry on his legacy. Throughout the film, early in the film, Anthony is bit by uh, a bee, a wasp, or whatever. And uh, his body, his arm starts like deteriorating. And it bothered me throughout the fucking film because I'm like, bro, your arm is turning into a fucking Slim Jim. Go to the hospital. Like, it looks like a burnt turkey wing. And he waits until it gets up to his neck and face until he says, right, maybe I need to go to the hospital. Yeah, you should have. You look like Tony Stark after he snapped his fingers. Like, come on, bro. So that bothered me. But his body starts changing. And by the end, Coleman Domingo's character, Burke, cuts his arm off, gives him the hook. And uh, he sends him out. He called the police. Basically, for the ritual to be complete, he has to be murdered by the police unjustly. So um, all this is happening while Brianna, Anthony's girlfriend, is tied to is uh, strapped to a chair and forced to watch. She gets away and ends up murdering Coleman Domingo's character, and then the police come in and shoot Anthony. That's when they put Brianna in the police car, tell her, you know, you're going to tell this story or you're going to jail for the rest of your life. She asks, can she see herself in the mirror before she tells them everything she knows or whatever? She says Candyman five times. Anthony comes out of the house, and murders all of the police officers. Believe Plus, it's important Brianna to mention alone. that before this scene, the only time you could see Candyman in the film was in the reflection. You could not see him physically. He only appeared in the reflection. But I assume once this ritual was complete and Anthony's the new Candyman, now he has a physical presence uh, once you summon him. He murdered the police officers. He allowed Brianna to set free. And there's a beautiful scene of him going around the police car and in the reflection in the mirror, you see all the iterations of Candyman, all the people who, you know, have been killed unjustly by police officers and racists alike. And after he murders all of the police officers, you see bees all around his head and it reveals Tony Todd's face. And he says to Brianna, tell everyone. And this is when I realized, well, I didn't realize this till last night when it was broken down for me, but. Jordan Peele and Nia DaCosta have turned Candyman into a black hero. He's no longer a horror villain. He's black people's anti-hero. And it's kind of crazy how they happen to do that. I think they went an amazing route about doing it. I don't know how I feel about it because to black people, Candyman's a horror icon, but now he's more like a hero, you know? And she says, tell everyone. So it's like, you know, anytime y'all are in danger with police officers, racists, say my name, I will come and I will protect you. With no black people harmed in the making of this film. Uh, I think they did an amazing job of that. I thought it was kind of genius. Um, I know some people are going to feel a certain way about it. It is what it is. Not everyone's going to have the same opinion. 
But let me know what you thought about it. If you saw Candyman, let me know what you thought in the comments. Leave a like on the video. Did you come away with different thoughts about it? Do you have a different perspective? How do you feel about them making Candyman a hero? Uh, let me know in the comments, man. Get some discussion going. Make sure you subscribe. Ring the notification bell so you know when these half and half reviews come out. And I'll let y'all the next one. Peace.